houses. And they shall infiltrate, and they shall say, we'll even black them out. We will even cause them to be so terrorized because there is darkness in one section and darkness in another section. Even as my prophet prays, and the people pray and make declaration that there is only one God, and that eternal God shall destroy the power and the plans of the immortal man. And as we go there, we stand there, declare the will of the Lord, and expose the many forces of hell. I pray today! Come on! to Jesus. Come on, let's praise Him. Praise Him. Why don't you let a shout of victory, everybody. Come on. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. It's so good to be back again. Thank you so much for making us feel so welcome. But I want to share a few things before we go in. This is a prayer gathering. And it's going to be the, probably the most exciting one you've ever had. Because you know what prayer gatherings can be like. If they pray, they can get pretty boring. Well, the reason I, I know it's going to be special is because, first of all, the Lord's Spirit spoke to me and said, I need to come to New York because of various things. But I love New York aside from anything else. And, um, and also the East Coast and said to me, I must gather the people to pray. We did that in Nepal. We did that in, um, in Ferguson. The Spirit of the Lord will tell me, go now. And we have one of the most incredible teams. And they put this all together within days. And um, I want to welcome hundreds of thousands of people watching this very minute now uh, on internet. They are our viewers. And then we have a television audience of millions of people that are going to be brought into this prayer meeting. So... If you've come to do anything but pray, you may as well leave right now because we are going to pray. But we also, we're going to start with praise. And I want to encourage you people because praise is how you enter the gates of the Lord. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And we all know that. But there's nothing more exciting than have something, some of the best musicians in the world that are anointed even a horn section, look at them, how smart they look. And we have a percussion section. So it's going to be one of those, one of those great, great nights. And by the end of this evening, God would have spoken clearly to us, given us some direction. But before I even get to the to piano, um, as Hannah said, thank you again, Upper Room, for uh, giving us the facility, which we love very much. So we are going to praise and we're going to pray. We're going to prophesy and we're going to proclaim. You know, Jacob was lying on the ground with nothing more than his clothes on his body. And he prays while he sleeps. And a lofty ladder ascends from earth to heaven. And angels ascend and descend, suggesting that they were carrying the prayerful sighs and groans from Jacob's aching heart to God's throne. I think it's probably one of the most beautiful stories. How he was lying in a place of pain. And within a few hours, that place of pain was changed into a place of rain. From that point onwards, he didn't wake up and say, this place that I'm on that has caused me so much pain is a, is a, is a, is a nasty place. He said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And so his perception changed. What happens when you pray is that your perception changes. You may not be moved from your situation, but your perception of your situation begins to change. Daniel prays for 21 days and the angel suddenly appears. Everybody say suddenly. Suddenly the angel appears and he says, from the first day that you set your heart to pray and to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard from the very first day. And because of your words, the angel said, I have come. There is great power in words that come from a prayerful heart. God, don't ever give up.
praying. I love praying. I spend hours praying every day. I don't travel as much, but we have a beautiful audience that are joining you tonight. And they are going to pray with you. And something is going to happen. No, I don't believe that all the bars in the streets are going to close. I hate to say that to you. I don't believe that America is suddenly going to become this big shining light. But there are remnants of people throughout this nation that are going to let their light so shine that Yeshua will be made known in the highways and the byways. Whether they accept Him or not, it's their business. That's what I believe today. We can pray. Surely when we pray, God will do something. Surely when we humble ourselves as the church, that God will do something. I believe it. Don't ever stop praying. Don't give up. God marks it down in the registry of His memory. He puts our prayers, I love this, like rose leaves, rose leaves in between the pages of His remembrance. And I want to say this, there is a special presence and a fragrance whenever God remembers you. Because He takes your tears and your prayers and He places them, places them in the book of His remembrance. I strongly encourage every one of you and I actually urge you today to cry out more passionately. To come to the cross and vow that you will never leave its shadow until you find that blessing that He has for you. I pray that today that you would do as Esther, the queen did, and she said, I will go into the king and if I perish, I perish. I pray that you would add to the vow of Jacob. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. How many of you are thinking those very same words? If God could do it for Jacob, He could do it for us. Come on. I will not leave you until you bless me. Come on. And then finally, before, I, before we start praising, we have a 9-11 event right here. Acts 9 verse 11. And this is what it says. And the Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go to a street called Straight. Do you know that God knows your cry? He knows your home. He knows your address. He knows where you live. And there is always someone, if you pray, that will come to you. And he said to Ananias, There is a man by the name of Saul. I want you to go to the house of Judas. Ananias got very nervous. And he said, Hold on. Don't you realize that he has the power to bind and to kill? This is the power that this man has. And he said, I want you to go there because I've already shown him your face. So Ananias, you really don't have any choice. I've shown Saul, a man by the name of Ananias, coming to pray for him. You have to go. You've got to get to the right place at the right time for the right reason at the right season. How many of you are praying out for God to touch somebody in your home? Then listen to this 9-11. He says, go to Straight Street and there is a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. For look, this is what God, Jesus says to Ananias. Look, he is praying. Today, I want you to say, look. And I want you to mention a loved one. And you watching me all over the world. Mention a loved one and say their name. And, and then say, look so-and-so is praying because you think they're not but they actually are praying and so will you say those words quickly think about a loved one a friend that needs a miracle and say look is come on give God a big hand and he is worthy to be praised Everybody say, He is worthy to be praised. G. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. What everybody say it with me. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Everybody say it. He is worthy to be praised. Say it again. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. One more time. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. That's why I bow before the Lord. Give me praise. Say something to 
him right now. Come on. Stand before the Lord and give him praise. Stand before the Lord and give him praise. Yeah. Lifting only hands. Lifting only hands. We show our love. That's why we bow before the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to hear you out there. I want to hear you. Come on.
comes alive when you sing my praise when I hear the breath of the living God coming out of you I, the tears flow from my eyes as I remember as I remember my son crying out 
Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And then I hear you. And I remember my son. Sing that note one more time. Sing that note again. My feet are on the soil of New York. This is where God told me to come. I'm here. I have my team with me standing at the United Nations. As you can see, all the flags are up. But the important thing is that we've got to realize that the kingdom of God is present. And the kingdom of darkness is also present. So we have a huge presence of darkness right here. Am I negative? No, I'm not negative about it. It's a fact. And prophecies have, have, have come forth about the corruption of the United Nations and how God wants to do something different. Uh, when you have a controlling factor like this, we have nations from all over the world uh, making decisions and specifically against Israel. That's when you catch my attention. So when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to come to New York, and uh, I obeyed His voice, as all of you know, um, something very big happened. Uh, I, I heard that the um, uh, a candidate came forth from New York by the name of Donald Trump and I'm not endorsing him in any way but I landed and found out that this has happened as you all know. So what am I trying to say? I'm here, we're going to pray for New York because we know that there are plans for disaster 
cataclysmic, I use the word catastrophic as well. And is it true that a prophet can actually come and pray and bring preservation to a nation? Yes, he can. You know, we, the one thing that we are lacking in this generation is hope. Why? Well, because we have so many voices telling us now is the time. Do you realize that when Hitler was around, that most prophetic teachers were saying that he was the Antichrist? And there were just a few that stood and said, this cannot be because Israel has not become a nation. People laughed at them and said, that's ridiculous. And well, it, it, it was a fact. Israel is always the land to look at to see where God is, what He's doing, always. And I want to tell you something. I have prophesied um, the resources from Israel. I've prophesied that Israel is going to prosper. God tells us in His Word that we are to pray for the prosperity. You know, the word that is used there is peace. But I don't think we've ever seen peace in Israel, or Jerusalem specifically. But yet that word is prosperity. And I want to tell you something. Even though they have decided against Israel standing protected, Israel will be protected and prosper forever. You know, I just met with the, um, the ambassador, the uh, consular general of, of uh, Israel in New York. And we had a beautiful discussion together. And uh, we, I, I sensed a bonding there because they are, they've heard about all the stuff that we're doing, all the fantastic things we're doing for Israel and in Israel. Do you know that New York has the greatest number of Jewish people than anywhere else in America? So it's very important that, that you understand that I'm here for a purpose. And I brought my colleagues with me to really address some of the issues it doesn't even have to be about the United Nations uh, taking place in the world and the nations that are standing against Israel and they're going to pray and stand together. But as I said before, what is the one thing that we are lacking? We are lacking hope because we have so many prophetic teachers saying this is the end. This is the time uh, for us to be uh, taken down and the church to be, to be uh, destroyed and for Christ to come back. And you know, we know that there's a time for that. Listen to this prophet today. That is not the time. This time is for the light to shine more than ever before, for the Christian people and the Jewish people to stand together. That's why I'm here in New York, because it represents, you know, if they want anybody, if they want a city, they, wa they want New York. And so that's why I'm here, to pray, to prophesy, to stand with the people of America and stand in New York and say, this day, we are here to protect you by the prayers of the, of, of the uh, not only the saints that are praying all to, with us now, but the prophetic voices that are speaking the truth. So what is the plan of God for New York? The plan of God for New York is for you to be protected. However, there are multiple attacks that are being planned right now for the summer, and you'll know about them. And the biggest thing that's concerning me is our young people. And I, I've seen that they are, and we all know that they're focusing on young people, but there are, there's even a worse attack coming against the young people, especially in New York. And so that's why we're here to pray. And one of the spirits we have to stand against is the spirit that controls this United Nations. That's one of the demonic powers we have to pray against and bring down. It's Alpha and Omega.
covenant, the ancientness of that covenant that he made before we were even born. He will never break his covenant, therefore he is forever. One, two, three, forever. spirit here. I know that you're watching on my television and all over the world. You are feeling the beauty of God's holy presence. The Bible says in Psalm 22 that God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits the tahila of His people. Right now, do you realize that your praise is drawing God closer to you? Do you realize that your praise is bringing Him to this place so that He may be enthroned amongst us? Why don't you praise Him a little longer? Because as you do so, I believe that God is enthroned in the midst of us. God is enthroned amongst these people. Hallelujah! praying spontaneously. Just do it. Listen to them, Lord God. Listen to your people praise. Listen to your people rejoicing in the foreverness of you. Listen to the people praising you, the eternal righteous one. We worship you today, Lord. We lift you up. I've watched over this New York and I've heard the sound in New Jersey and I've heard the sound in the Bronx I've heard the sound in Long Island says the Spirit of God and of those who are desperate and there are a community of people communities of people that are afraid of ISIS, that are afraid that the Lord would withdraw His hand at such a crucial time as this. But I am gathering the people together. I am gathering the Jewish people together. And I am gathering Christian people together. For this shall be a two-edged sword in New York. It shall be a very unusual thing that shall take place. And as a result of the unity of many Messianic Jews and many Christians, there shall be a light that shall shine from New Jersey through New York, through all the boroughs, says the Lord. And this light shall draw me here and I shall choose someone that shall lead this nation to cry out righteousness for the Jews, righteousness for the land of Israel, righteousness for New York, righteousness for America. Oh, but righteousness for His people. And God says, my church, 
shall arise and they shall stand hand in hand with Israel and because of that it shall be pleasing to me for New York shall shock the, the people in this next political race. New York shall shock the people and the East Coast shall have a shaking and a reverberation that shall cause demonic powers to come down. Therefore I say to you praise me for I shall hear your praise and I will hear your prayers and I will raise up a voice from this region says the Lord of hosts. Come on! There shall be a leader of Isis that shall have a soul of Tarsus. Incredible. Listen to me. Have a conversion like soul of Tarsus. The hatred in this leader shall cause him to fall to his knees for it is consuming him. Do not laugh and do not say that this is impossible. But God said they said it was impossible with Saul of Tarsus. Watch me work from inside and watch me do something and as I bring him out there shall be a massive evangelist raised up that shall speak the word of Yeshua, that shall cry out from the corners and show them where they plan to attack. Show the plans internally. God says I am not finished with you yet. I have only just begun says the Lord for it is begun and you will see it with your eyes says the Lord of hosts. Please, please, please be seated everybody. You can see how passionate I am about this nation, about you. And you know, I'm not ashamed of it. To pray, at least to pray and say, God, if you've revealed to me do you know, and I'm not saying this in any boasting fashion, but do you know that he revealed to me the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden years ago, and I wrote it, and it was given to the president of the United States then. And they said, I said he's in Pakistan, and he's in a, pla in a place called Faiz Alibad. And they said to me, he's not there. He is in another part of the world. And I said, as true as this prophet lives, you will find him there. And they did. That's where they captured him. It's time for the prophetic voice to arise and speak what is relevant for the goodness of Israel, for the health and prosperity of Israel, and for America and the church to rise up and to become a glowing force. This is going to happen, but not in big church buildings only. It's going to happen in streets. It's going to happen in houses. This is beginning to flicker all over this nation. So if you think it's the end, but trust me, not quite yet. There's something about to mushroom and we're all going to be a part of it. How many of you are excited for your children and your children's children? Hi everyone, behind me is the 9-11 Memorial. Uh, it's very moving, it's very sad. Um, you'll notice that they put roses, uh, you know, to remember the loved ones. And uh, it, for me personally, it's very moving because uh, of what happened to me in 1996, <clears throat> where I actually caught a glimpse uh, of this event. And when you stand here today, you know, what's it, 14 years later, and uh, you see what they've done, it tells me. Uh, of America's resilience, the fact that God is a God of restoration. And when a people care enough for themselves that this is the result of it. You see the Freedom Tower, it's absolutely amazing what they've done. <clears throat> and really actually it's a slap in the face of Islam, uh, uh, terrorist, radical Islam if you want to call it that. It's a, a slap in the face and it's a, it's a statement statement we will come back and we will uh, survive not only survive but we will move to greater heights and uh, so that's the statement that I get out of it come on it's time to celebrate in the presence of our enemies it's time to celebrate one two three four come on you can dance if you want come on
God, that your will be done. We pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, Lord God, for your will at this time for America. And we glorify you because we know it shall happen according to your will and according to your purposes. And this in the name of Yeshua, the Shach. You may be seated. Just before I left to come to New York, I started getting a, um, I want to say a burden, but a, to pray for, uh, for, for Donald Trump. Um, not that I have any particular uh, affection for him in any way, but I felt that uh, with all the changes that have taken place in his life, uh, I don't know much about him, but that he is so really standing for Israel, standing for the Christians. He was even in the, uh, the Israel, uh, the big parade they just had. Um, he was chosen as, what do they call him, the Marshal? Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal. I mean, that's quite a statement for Donald Trump to be in the, in the huge parade representing Israel. And then his statement that he's made before about how he would stand with the Christians. Um, so I really started getting a burden and, and uh, the Lord started speaking to me and saying, look, put a word together for him. I hadn't completed it, but I knew that I had to be in New York at this time. Now, you know, we planned this and we were supposed to be here last week. Uh, things changed and so we left on the 16th. Well, as you know, on the 16th when I left, he made his big announcement, so by the time my feet hit the ground, he'd made the announcement that he's going to run for prison. Now, here's the thing. I'm not endorsing him, but right behind me, you see the Trump Towers. Right behind me, you see a statement of man that has been successful in his business career, in his, in his career. He's been through hardships, but the Spirit of the Lord told me to, to come and stand here and to speak the truth over this, over this nation, especially New York and what would come out of New York. So it's going to be interesting when I, when I do meet him or I do present the word to him and that you also pray for the will of God to be done for this nation. I 
Deuteronomy 32 verse 9 it says the Lord's portion is his people he chose us to be his portion his payment his inheritance we are his portion we are his allotment his dividend his fortune he purchased us not with corruptible things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ there is no mortgage in his estate no lawsuits can be raised by opposing claimants the price was in open court and we are God's property his freehold forever there is a blood mark on all the chosen of God invisible to the human eye but visible to the hosts of heaven and to hell. There is a blood mark on all the chosen of God. Raise your hands and say, that's me. Visible to the hosts of heaven and hell. They see the blood mark and they either run away from you or they run to you. We are also his conquest. What a battle he had over us before we were one. How long he laid siege to our hearts. How often he sent us terms of surrender, but we barred our gates and we fenced our walls against him. But do we not remember the beautiful hour when he carried our hearts by storm? When he placed his cross against the wall and he scaled our ramparts, placing our strongholds and positioning on our strongholds the blood red flag of his omnipotent mercy yes we are the conquered captives of his omnipotent love chosen and purchased do you realize today that the rights of our divine possessor are not transferable to another and not capable of being repudiated we are his choice we are the Lord's portion I want you to remember that I want everybody watching me all over the world everybody in this building we're going to do something before we get to the final portion of one of the most amazing powerful expressions we're going to take back what is ours I said we're going to take back what is ours. Before I do that, I want you to remember what I just said to you. The Lord's portion is His people. I want everybody watching me all over the world to stop for one minute. We're going to do something that I always allow the people to do because not only is it sacred and scriptural, but it blesses the heart of God. In this moment where God is present, where He has just told us what He wants to do and what He plans on doing, 
not only for our cities and our families, for our nation, but for Israel. We are going to receive an offering. I want every person watching me all over the world, many of you have seen us, we promised you we'd come here, we'd minister and we'd minister to the Lord. I want every person to be seated, please. And I want you to pray a prayer with me and everybody watching me at this very moment. I don't want you to come empty handed. You can do a, a little bit or you can do a lot, but what I want you to do is this. We're going to pray. We're going to say to God, I want to sow specifically into the promise that you just gave us. There's no, there's no pressure to do anything. But many of you watching all over the world can see that God has one great plan and he's told us he would take out the spiders and every little thing that is hiding and expose them during the summer. That during the summer, he would show himself strong for Israel, but he would also show himself strong for America. I believe in that promise. And you know what? You don't have to pay money for it. But when the prophet came and he said, I heard the sound of abundance. I hear the sound of abundance. Listen to me. What did they do? He built an altar and they brought the sacrifice and the offering to the altar. And once they had done that, what happened? First and foremost, God sent fire and consumed the offering. Secondly, he destroyed the prophets of Baal in the presence of that altar. And third, and that's what we are going to see in many, in many ways through summer. But finally, he sent an abundance of rain. I hear an abundance of life. I hear an abundance of restoration. Now pray this prayer with me, every person in the building and everybody watching all over the world. And we're going to do something special for God tonight. Let's pray. I want you to say this with me. Lord God, what an honor for me to place something into your hands after we heard the word of the Lord. Speak to me now. Show me what I should give at this altar. And as I give it, Lord, receive it from my heart. Destroy the enemies that have surrounded me and bring what has been spoken to my home, to my nation, and to Israel. I am going to bless Israel today. And I pray that as I give, that the blessings would come upon me. Now, Lord, speak to every person, all of you watching all over the world. Look at me. You have the power to make a change today. Boots on the ground in New York. You know, we've been to this, in the streets. We stood in front of the Freedom Tower. I kneeled on the ground. I prayed. I prophesied. Now, here I stand and present myself to you now. Whatever you sense in your heart, I want you to begin and act and do it now. For those that are in the building, all you have to do is Make out your checks or your credit card. Just get an envelope there. If they don't have an envelope, just wave your hand and make it out to upper room. Do what you normally do. This will go to us. This will be dedicated to the blessing of this nation and for Israel, I promise you. For those watching my internet and television, there's a red link below your screen. Go to that red link right now. You can sense God's presence and do what you do best. And that is give what you sense with love in your heart. Do it now. For those that are that are watching also by internet. If you want to give, you can give it by calling the number that is on the screen. Or you can mail it in. There's an address there. You'll go through it and you'll see it. Just go ahead and do it. For those that are sitting and saying, you know what, I don't want to move. I just want to give by text. Then you just, you just type 43965 and either put gift and the amount that you want or you can put Israel and the amount that you want. Or boots. Because that's what we have on these ground on this ground. By the way, I've got some fancy boots. They blue. I'm not gonna take very long with this, of course, because this is you know, I don't like people to say, Well, we shouldn't be doing an offering. Why not? Why not? You know, when God is present and He's spoken, that's the best time to give. Because I don't give when I don't sense God's presence on somebody. But if I sense it, I pour it out and He blesses. There are many people waving their hands. 
Just please take an envelope from, give an envelope to these many people that want to. I want to also welcome Chase Tarka, who is here today. Hello, my dear friend. Uh, he's going to be one of the greatest producers and directors in the world. And he's sitting right here in the midst of us. Stand up, Chase. It's a young man that God is raising up from New York. He's doing movies already, and it's going to impact the entire earth. His father, Stephen, is here, and his sister, Alexandria. Good to have you. We have a dear partner that is here today, Lana and Arha. Where are you? From New Jersey. Where are you? Please stand up. Thank you for being here. You are just beautiful. Let that house church go. Rock, 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 New Jersey. And then we have Armand, who is a dear friend that is here with his son, Chris. Can you stand up, Armand? Please. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for being here. Isn't it beautiful what's happening? Look at these beautiful people. Just to think throughout New York, you have people like this, and we don't even know about it until we gather together and we hear the sound of New York Christians shouting out. I hear the true shout. I want you to do me a favor just for me. Would you give one more big, huge shout because you do it the best. Come on. There you go. Let's pray over the offering. Let's pray over the offering, everybody. Let's pray together. Lord, as the people are giving throughout the earth, it pleases you when we bring from our hand and put it in your hand at your altar. I pray today, Lord, that you would receive these gracious gifts and that you would crown them with loving kindness. You'd fill them out with good things so that their youth is renewed like the eagles. You would redeem their lives from destruction and you would heal their diseases and forgive all of their iniquities. Today, Lord, I say what Habakkuk said because it's from my heart, Lord. Though the fig tree may not blossom and though there be no fruit in the vine and though the labor of the of the olive may fail and there be no food in the fields that the flock be separated from the fold and there be no herd in the sheds yet I will praise you and yet I will rejoice in you and I will join in the God of my salvation for he shall make my feet like the feet of deer and he shall cause me to walk on my lofty hills I pray for this blessing and for this energy upon your people today. And I thank you for receiving the offerings with joy in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord. Amen. Bright and shining light that led you yesterday. Light your way and guide you to eternal one and take away the veil of limitation many of you may just want to pray this prayer as we come to the close of this beautiful evening because many prayers were given up some people wander through the wilderness and they don't ever get to that place where they actually see and sense and give themselves to Him. It comes a point in your life you have to surrender. So you know, I believe what I'm hearing and I'm seeing. There is a Christ. He is alive. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son. And as Motel taught me, that word there is ordained him. Only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe watching me somewhere out there in a room or maybe even in this building. You just never have made that decision. And you can do it today. It's so simple. The spirit is drawing you and all you have to say is, Jesus you came that I might have life and I want to accept your love and your forgiveness. Do it now. Just say these words. I receive 
your gift. I give you the one thing that I have been afraid to give to anyone because I've been hurt. And that is my heart. I'm going to trust you with this most delicate thing, my heart. I give you my heart now. The bright and shining light that led you yesterday will light your way and guide you to eternal one. Now he'll take away the veil of limitation. You can pray this. Open up my eyes, my heart, eternal one. And let me hear the voice that always comforts me. In the dry and thirsty land, I long for you. To you, to you, my light is shining all the way. To you, to you, my love is shining all the way. To you, to you, my light is shining all the way. To you, What I love about the prophetic is you get so close to the heart of God. You hear his mind, his thoughts, what he plans to do. You know, you need this on a regular basis. And there are millions of viewers all over the world that experience this twice a week, sometimes even more, at my den. And you can experience it as well. I would love to have you there. All you've got to do is go to kim.tv. We have so much. We have worship, we have songs that come from the heart of God, prophetic words about things that have not happened yet. That's what we, we say to the people, welcome to the future. And I want you to experience that. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>